Matt. James. Thanks nice for coming in to see us, mate. How are you keeping? Yeah, it's not bad, mate. Not bad. Good, good. Well, look, the reason we got in here today is to talk about chod rig fishing, a, a mm. rig that both I and yourself use. Um, gets a lot of sticks sometimes, chod for nods, things like that, but it's a very, yeah. very effective rig. Um, so just quickly before we go on to that, and I know you're going to blow my mind with, with the way you use the chods and your setups, etc. How's Matthew? I'm not bad, mate. I'm okay. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. been a funny year, hasn't it? It has, yeah. It's been really, really weird. It's affected my fishing quite a bit. Yeah. But, um, How much yeah. so would it, has it affected your fishing? I mean, obviously, like I said, lakes have been busy. We touched on this yeah. with Nigel last time. We had him in lakes, you know, full of members now. Um, did it reduce the amount of fishing you've done last year? Or? It did, yeah, an awful lot, really. Yeah. Um, during the summer, I mean, I'd normally be float fishing in the summer, and that didn't change. I did carry on with my float fishing, yeah. but it just meant the waters I was going to was so much busier. Yeah. Loads yeah. and loads of people, just because loads of, loads of people taking up angling, loads of people yeah. trying to spare time. Oh, it's a great thing to see. It's a great thing to oh, see. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's great for the sport. I mean, yeah. it, it could have been a disaster. It's very busy. It? It could have been, yeah, it, yeah, but it could have gone completely the other way. Absolutely. Couldn't it? So, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's great for the, the industry and, yeah. and the sport, but it's, it's meant that... I've had to just search for new waters because I've been a bit mm. lax in getting my name down for places. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the club places were getting really, really busy. Mm. So I've, I've done a fair bit of wandering about trying to find free fishing here and there, yeah. which is something I quite like to do in the summer anyway, but I've done quite a bit more of that. Yeah. Um, got thrown off some village ponds and things like that. No. Um, I'll do you this story. But as luck would have it, I have found a water because I, I had to find somewhere that wasn't so busy. Yeah. And I found a lovely little place um, not too far away from here, actually. Good. Uh, an old, real old lake. Um, Beautiful, tiny, really, really small place, but the fish, the fish are ever so old. Yeah, um, surrounded by rhododendron, so it's really nice in the winter. So I've been just like, really enjoying the fishing there. Not fishing for anything particularly big. Um, just enjoying some your real fishing. old fish, which is what yeah, really and enjoying the fishing, going back really to the square one again. But, and the amazing thing is, where everywhere else has been rammed, there's just nobody on it. That's all, it's yeah. a rare thing now, no, isn't it? You know, I've fished it with a mate of mine a few times, and if there's been three of us on there, that's been busy. Oh. And, and where, whereabouts is that? Oh, I'm yeah, I can't, really, can't really tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> right, so anyway, look, we've got you in it to talk about chods. Mm. Okay, um, as we said, it's both a rig that, that, that we use to great effectiveness. It's caught you some great fish in its time. Yeah. A rig you continue to use now. Um, so, chods. Why do you use a chod? Why, what to you, what, what and why do you use the chod? I'd say the main reason that I use a chod is because they're really good for a pub chuck. Don't really have to see what they land on. <laughs> yeah, blind drunk <laughs> chuck man. Seriously, um, I think one of the main advantages with the chod is that it's always fishing, or not, not always, but nearly always fishing. Yeah. Um, it might not be the best presentation for every situation, but it's a cover all. You know, it will present a bait in every situation. Yeah. And I think a lot of the time, people are fishing. They're casting out their hinge rig or their bottom bait or whatever, and, and a lot of the time it's compromised, and there's no way a fish can actually pick that bait up. Mm. Whereas with the chod, provided it's done properly, it's nearly always fishing. So yeah. I think I'm fishing a lot more of the time. Yeah. Um, they're just so versatile. You know, you can use them anywhere, pretty much anywhere, everywhere. There's a lot less disturbance because you haven't not having to find spots and what have you. There's you know, it's just one cast and you're fishing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's one of them. You cast out. It's almost like you just know you're presented. Yeah, you're you're fishing. You're. It might not be the most effective way of fishing, but it is fishing. Yeah. Um, fish don't seem to be able to deal with them. I just, they just they just nailed every it's single time, and it's it's yeah. unbelievable the hook holds you can get with them. Yeah. You know, you you think it's a you know it's two inches rig and, and it can be two inches back in the mouth yeah, it's, yeah. it's unbelievable yeah. and another one of the reasons that I really like them is I just don't lose fish on them they just don't no. fall off no. which I know a lot of people do struggle with and we'll probably go into that later yeah. but, so um, you know we're going to look fantastic. in detail at the way you set these up I mm. mean I must admit looking at this now this is something I'm really interested to talk about especially the way the lead setup you've got on there um, but let's just go maybe back to when and where and why you would use a child and, and what sort of situations you would find yourself using one in Right, I I know a lot of people say, oh, I wouldn't use them over gravel or clean bottom, and they're just for weed. I, I would use them pretty much anywhere. Yep. I don't really see it just a rig. I see it as a, it's a whole way of angling. It's it feeds into like you know the mobile style of fishing where you see fish, not yep. not where you think you can present a bait. Um, it's more it's down to hunting rather than trapping fish. Yep. If that makes any sense. I can I can turn up at a lake and I can cast wherever I've seen a fish show. 
You know, I can walk around, I can find fish, and I can you know note the spot that they are, and that's where I can put my rig mm. because it's so versatile in the way it present yeah. and the the bottom makeups it will present over. Um, so I I use it pretty much anywhere. Yeah. Um, primarily on on lakes where they eat boilies because uh, it, it is a, it's a rig, rig and I, yeah. and I don't yeah. want you know a load of a pile of particles there and little bits and pieces. It, it's it's a rig for for boilie fishing. Um, so any lake where they eat boilies. Um, with the exception, really, of um, the really heavily stocked venues. You know, they're new, normally day ticket waters, yeah. but some of them are club lakes where the water's co- permanently coloured yeah. for fish there in the bottom up. Um, I've just found they haven't really worked very well on there, and I think that's probably down to the fact that the fish are hungry all the yeah. time. Yeah. You know, there's so much Cloudy up for water, yeah. you know. You yeah, they're constantly rooting about, and you yeah. know, the mouths are in the silt. Um, and I think, you know, it's a bait couple of inches above them just gets missed just foreign to yeah. them in a way a and, you know I've, I've, I've tried them on places like that and I'm not saying you don't get a bite on them but you, you can do it a lot better with a, yeah. a more standard you know, a yeah. bottom bait rig or, or whatever so that's the only place where I wouldn't really consider them yeah so going like I said before again we go into the mechanics of your rigs well, I know there's a special cast that you use and I've seen you using it when we fished together before um especially the way you cast that and you rather than sort of letting the, the lead drop into the lake you you sort of almost pull it back a little bit and lay it down explain the way that you do it to me so anyone watching now mm. can can put this into their army when they're fishing right it's it's all to do with uh, I mean, uh, my chod is a, it's a running chod rig so the yep. the rig can slide right the way up to the top of the leader yeah now i think a lot of the time i mean people think you can just cast a chod out and it's fishing and it's not quite as simple as that if that if that lands like that on a bit of gravel yeah yeah fine you'll get away with that but if that's weed then that's going to have been dragged into the weed. You can't just cast out and let it sink on a tight line nope. and expect to get a good presentation. Mm-hmm. So the way that I cast is all to do with getting... It's not so much the cast, it's it's what happens sort of just before, as the lead hits the water and, yeah. and after that. Um, it's all to do with getting the lead to drop vertically yeah. so, so that the leader can pass through the swivel and so that your rig's right up at your top there. Okay, so it helps so, basically push the rig up yeah. as it's coming down. Yeah. Um, the buoyancy of the pop-ups will, will come to the top, That's and it. then you lay yeah. it. Yeah, and if it's at that angle, if your line's sinking at that angle, then this can't possibly float up to the top, no. so I need to get it to sink vertically. Um, it, it's quite a complex procedure, and it's one of the things when I've been doing coaching that takes ages and ages Some yeah. some some people. Some people pick it up straight away. Uh, it's second nature of me because I've been doing it for so long, but it can take a lot of getting used to. Yeah. Um, now, I'll, I'll cast just the same as anybody else cast out. Just before that lead hits the water, I'll bring the rod up to vertical. So up to sort of 12 o'clock? Yeah, 12 o'clock. I can measure 12 o'clock. You know, it yeah. could be 10 o'clock or yeah. 9 or whatever, but 12 o'clock, you can see it, can't you? Yeah, straight yeah, yeah. Up. parallel, yeah. So I'll bring it up to vertical line hits a clip and then I can cushion the lead in so you're making minimal disturbance and that's not to fill the drop or anything like no, that no no that, that's just to cushion just the lead into the, sure into the water yeah as yeah. soon as that lead hits the water I'll then sweep the rod back up to 12 o'clock again so it's gone from 12 bail arm open to, 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 to sort of allowing line right to come out up. as you bring it back no up. bail arm's still well it, the bail arm's open yeah. but it's against a clip yeah so, okay so your lead hits the water rod comes straight back up so you're yeah. bringing that rod back just yeah, so the, it's, it's almost like the, the lead's coming back at you again. Right back at you, which then forces your... Imagine your, your rig's there, so you pulled this right back, so it forces this rig right against your bottom B. Yeah. Following that, I'll then, as soon as it's back there, I'll then follow the lead down with the tip. Now, that's the real difficult bit, because you've got to get the right pace. Almost letting the lead go at its own pace. Almost, yeah, but keeping in touch with it so you can feel it still. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. You're, you're, in effect, letting letting the lead go down like that but vertically yeah and so that as you're dropping that down get, yeah and it's allowing the chod to, to your chod pass can through. your um the, the leader can slide through that swivel yeah okay and then for the moment that lead hits the bottom then that line doesn't get tightened okay that then stays so do you then allow the line to sort of slack almost so you get to to to, to drop down because a lot of mistakes i think people use maybe not even they're just getting into fishing um, tight lines are an absolute no with chods as we know you yeah. know because you yeah, can end up as you've mentioned pulling with a tight line and also you've got to keep an eye on with currents through the through the lakes themselves as well yeah, pull yeah that line in. goes tight and it may or may not ruin your presentation but yeah. in there you know there's a chance and of confidence so it will affect your confidence yeah. as well yeah. so no that's that's got to stay slack but I mean you see it all the time you'll see someone cast out tighten the line up 
and then slacking off and think they're fishing a slack line, but it's too late, it's damage could be done by then. Yeah. So from the moment that lead touches the bottom, then I'll slacken it off and it will never go tight. But I'm always, I'll, I'll hold the rod tip up as high as I possibly can yeah. and try and sink the line from the far side, not the near side. Yeah. It's no good just putting your tip under and winding no, it down. No, 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 no. You, I want to sink it from the far side and, and get get as much line that side to sink as possible Yeah. to okay. get the best line lay over the... And just quickly as well, so a lot of people get confused where to set beads um, mm. with, with, when chodry fishing. Now, again, I will use, and I'm sure you'll agree with me, I will use chods on a clean bottom sometimes, okay, oh, yeah. or quite 100%. a lot of the time actually. Yeah. Uh, it's a great single hook bait rig as well. Uh, rig as well. Um, so I, what I'll often do is if I'm fishing a clear area, I'll move my beads closer together, purely so when the fish goes this way or this way, it, there's just enough um, resistance there to set that hook. But obviously if you was fishing in very deep weed, then you are moving your bead further up the top there. Yeah, now my, my top bead, when I'm fishing it, is always going to be six inches from the end. Yeah. Um, I won't go right up to the end of my lead core because I want a bit of weight there to make sure that it's pulled it down. Yeah. Because you, you know, obviously your, your last inch hasn't got any lead in it at all, and yeah. if your bead's too high, then it could just loop up yeah, at could the just end. Kick up so it is always going to be six inches down. The only time that I would move that further down is if the water was shallower than that because okay. I obviously don't want it any deeper than the water yeah okay um, but no I, I leave it whatever bottom I'm fishing on I'll leave it up the top okay but it's interesting you say that you know about fishing on gravel and that because there's so many people don't use them on gravel won't use them no. on silt or whatever and I, and I only use them in weed and, and while they are the ultimate weed rig as far as I'm concerned yeah. it's still really that's really effective on chuddy bottoms weedy yeah, venues exactly, exactly. And, and that's where they come to your own but yeah. like I say when I'm loads fishing, of fish on, on gravel and, and silt yeah. and, and clear clear bottom of course loads on them yeah I mean loads. generally when I'm fishing if I'm fishing with three rods which is quite rare often to be fair but generally always one of my rods will be on a chod because if I do see a fish showing mm. on a venue that I'm new to for instance something like that I do know a fish just showed up you know look bubbles coming up when I just feel say set the bead high put a chod on it um, spread body around it sort of thing you know if you need to and, and you just know you're presented that's why I love a chod rig and that's why I've caught a lot on them and, and do you find that the same? Yeah I mean not, normally I wouldn't have one rod on a, a chod because I'm it's I see it as a whole way of fishing so if I'm chod fishing I'll have all three rods oh really you dedicate yeah, generally, all three rods generally speaking, to, to, yeah, to the chods yeah, yeah, okay. yeah unless unless I'm fishing and I think I should be getting bites and I'm not yeah then I might change something. I might change maybe to a, a low hinge rig or something yeah. like that. Um, maybe something a little bit more subtle. But no, normally when I'm chod fishing, it'll be all three rods. Okay. And especially, in the, normally I'm fishing weedy venues. Yeah. Most of the places I fish, you know, they choke with it. Yeah. So let's look into this, <laughs> the, the way you set things up. Because this, to me, looks really interesting. I know this is something that you come up with yourself. So if we can just explain this end section here for the last right. foot of this rig okay or the or the leader should yeah. we say all it is it's basically an extra foot of lead core yeah or whatever leader material you're using yeah um that keeps the lead away from the fish so okay. if you can imagine on most setups you've got your leader with a lead right on the end yeah now so let's just take that out of the equation yeah, I mean, it's normally you've got a lead sitting there the fish has picked up the, the yep. chod the beads come down and it's, it's right slid next down to like that that, that, that chod is right next to the, the fish's mouth yeah so you imagine that bouncing about that's right next work. to the mouth yeah, I'm that's going to shake a hook out and i'm just going to ask you to hold that just yep. a couple of inches just hold it a couple of inches and give it a shake give it a good shake like you're a fish that's quite a violent movement isn't yeah, it 100 percent. and it yeah. wouldn't surprise you if that tore a hook out no now with that extra extension on there so yeah, the, yeah it just dampens everything down well. a bit doesn't it yeah and it's almost keeping not a constant pressure on the hook almost as well yeah. without it rattling around and enabling them to to, to work the hook exactly. out shall we say so, so to me i i have incorporated that into my chods because i'm convinced that that's the reason that they don't fall off okay. and i just I hardly lose any you know i've yeah. i've i've lost one fish in the last year Okay, that's it, interesting. Could you just yeah. run through how you set this up for me? So anyone viewing this now can nick your idea, because mm, yeah, I, I will be, um, and I want to see how you're setting this up. Yeah, right, so we've got we've got a lead core leader with our running chart. Just quickly as well, it. how much lead core do you usually use? Have you got a set of length of lead core that you use? I use, yeah, that. Yes, that's what I do when I do with lead core. I pull yeah. my arms out put and that like that. Me Put my loops on the end. Yeah. Um, so that's what I'd normally use for any other sort of fishing. Yeah. And then I've got this extension piece, which makes it more suitable for chods anyway, yeah. because it's giving you an extra foot. Yeah. 
and all it is so you've got your, your normal leader your bottom bead yeah and then it terminates with a swivel and, and that's just looped um, on there because I noticed the way yeah, with your leg core got, you've basically you've um you fuse the loop on there. Well, not yeah, the loop. It's you, just, you it's just a loop, which okay. enables okay. me to quick change. So, swivel. Yeah, so yeah. that loops there purposely so that if I wanted to put a hinge rig on or whatever, I could just loop to loop that off yeah. and just change okay. over without yeah, it. Like that. Yeah. Down. So there's a buffer bead that sits over the swivel just that's on the end. It. Yeah. Um, now, the extension piece is just a foot. I mean, you could go down to eight, nine inches or so. Yeah. Of lead core Swords or whatever lethal. material you're using, you can yeah. make that out of nylon. You can make it out of anything, really. Yeah. Um, lead free, whatever you're using, and it's just got a swivel on each end. Yeah. The size eight swivel spliced onto each end there. Yeah, spliced onto each end. And this is and that's that ju- it. Just keeps that. That's keeps the, the, that's that far the away from the fish's mouth. Okay. That's, that's the 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 main reason behind it. Yeah. Now on the bottom swivel, you could have a bead over that, but it's yeah. so far away from the the hook that I can't really see the point of having yeah. anything else on there. At the bottom of that, there's just a couple of inches of uh, weak link. Now, I use power gum for that. And what pound power gum do you use? I use seven pound power gum. Seven pound, um, okay. It's there for an emergency. It's not there to drop the lead. No. I, re- I don't want that lead to no. drop, really. What I, I want is that lead keeping a constant pressure on the hook. Yeah. So you're, somewhere you're relying on that lead to be on I'm, I'm relying on that lead to, hu- yep. to hold that hook in and it yep. just, you know, just keeping it there. Just it's keep keeping the constant light point. pressure on the hook, yep. keeping the hook still pointing down. Yep. Um, but that is there so that in an emergency, if the lead did get snagged up, it will break. Okay. It will break in it, you know, in an extreme situation. Yeah. Now, I know one thing we've talked about before is is the lead itself. You're very picky, shall we say, in which um, shape lead you use. Um, you're oh. also using a zip lead there, and tell us the reason why. Right. First of all, I'll use the smallest lead I possibly can. Okay. And most of the time, that's an ounce. Just nice. so you don't usually some... distance fish, do you? Um, no, I'm sort of up to eighty yards, really. And you can, most of the time, I know you've got a one ounce lead on there now. Um, that's an ounce, what and that's lead? what I'll use probably eighty percent of the time. Yeah, um, especially when I'm fishing weedy waters because you don't want to be fishing far no. out. Right? You want to be fishing as close as you as you can to land your fish, really. Yeah. Um, so it's an it's an ounce, ounce and a half, two at a push, really. Yeah. And the the shape, like you say, is really really important. Yeah. Um, you know yourself if you're leading about trying to find a spot and what have you use a dumpy lead and you cast it in weed it's stuck isn't it it, yeah. it just stays there and you're yeah, resigned to then the shoulders on the lead exactly yeah it gets caught the in weed. there and there's no way you're popping that lead out no. is there you've no. got to reel all the way back in being a dustbin and, lid full of, yeah, full of weed yeah, back and cast back out again whereas if you use that sort of shape lead like a, a distance lead um, there we've got some that have got like a rounder bottom on there yeah. fine as well but yeah. as long as it's like that long just to long take and shape drag no shoulder, shoulder to, catch, yeah. to catch on the okay. weed yeah. you, you, if you led about with that you can just pop it out of the weed can't you every time yeah. just give it a little flick and out and then you're, yeah. you're back bringing it back yeah. um, and it's the same with the fish on the end yeah. do you know okay. what I mean it's, it's, it just doesn't get caught so readily no okay so basically you stick, you never really go above a one and a half to two ounce lead yeah two two and a half is probably the heaviest I've yeah. gone with it I mean I'll, I'm not saying I wouldn't fish it heavier but I wouldn't get away with the, not with the cast, link at the no, bottom if you was going at extreme distance yeah, then, you're not, you're not going to make yeah, it yeah then maybe are you? you are looking at trying to drop your lead okay right so let's just go back up from the tulip bead onwards and we'll mm. work to the chod in a minute um, the beads that you use um, in fact a bead that you helped us design or you, you sort of come up with the design for us they're your little chod beads and we do that's t- right yeah two of these two types we do a slim and a high bore obviously the high bore for going over lead cores um, or, or any form of leader and then we do a slim which is it's a perfect, perfect for nylon or for nylon, for nylon. Carbon, okay yeah. so um, the, you use those beads on there yeah. one set at each end that's all you require on your, your yeah just, just one one at each end um, and is it this, always lead core that you're using by the way I know you like our plummet in 45 yeah every time I can get away with using lead core that's what I use but if the water says you can't use it then I'll go to the lead free yeah um Maybe one of the um, like the fuse leader type that we've things, done, yeah. if, or or naked, you know. Yeah, so if there was a complete ban on any form of leader, whether it be fuse loops, um, lead core, leadless lead core, you will still fish this. In, oh yeah, in, in still, a naked presentation. Yeah, naked, yeah. naked. The the only way I, I don't think it's effective at all is if you try and do it with tubing. I've not really. No. 
found a way and to if do you that, were doing this it sounds so I want to say if you was doing this naked Matthew <laughs> um, you would still do the same thing that you've done here also exactly, exactly the same, yeah. the same yeah, set up exactly apart from uh, that wouldn't be made of lead core that would be made of whatever the material I'm using so you'd use like, almost like the mainline material you're using yeah, you would yeah. use on mm. that um, the, the one foot section that yeah. was I'll call it yeah. on here yeah I've, I've got these little um, extensions made up in lead core I've got them made up in lead free yeah. and I've got them made up in nylon you're so sitting on a bag yeah, you are Mr Organised honestly I mean <laughs> yeah. uh, blow me away sometimes but yep. right, going so back to these beads yeah, James, yeah. You, uh, you touched on they're made with a, a hole in the middle that's yep. shaped like a Y yeah so that if they come up against the knot, they guide the knot yes. into the middle. And again, over a splice section of... Exactly, of, of yeah, of, over a splice yeah. or anything like yeah. that. Now, we've, we've gone over the, the where I put the top one, um, but the bottom one, that's quite important in positioning and that as well. Yeah. It, it wants to be far enough above the swivel and the bead yeah. so that your hook bait's not rubbing against it. Yeah. Bear in yeah. mind you're fishing in weed, so you, you, know, you might be casting quite a lot to get, to get your lead down or to find find the spot that you want a yeah. low spot in the weed um, so you want that so that Almost. your bait can't contact your bead yeah there. you want because it away because you've got a loop nipping on away at your bait. And, and you don't want any chance of that trapping do you so you're no, you setting it above, above the splice yeah, almost yeah if you're doing multiple casts once that bait's got wet it gets a bit softer and that bead just smacking on that bait all the time every cast just chips away at it which is going to start affecting your balance okay. so I want that well up like that yeah. so you know probably six inches up from the bottom six inches down from the top I think yeah. so it just keeps it away it will slide down once you've hooked a fish yeah it will slide down so and there. the way you're talking about like so with the the, the chod bees that you designed for mm. us um, you've got like, almost like a Y shape internally they've got a Y shape an open end and then um, you know, yeah the, like the, a the funnel and what way round because it's probably important to somebody who wants to be really, using really this kit yeah um, which way round will they shape the open end so yeah. if you could explain to us. It's really, really important yes. to get this right. And they are put on the... Um, on the packets, and illustrated on our packets. Yeah, I forget the name yeah. of the... the um, it's like a little wire loop that they yeah. come on. Um, but that, they're made so that they go they on the correct way. On. You must have the, the wider bore end yeah. facing the knot, facing, yeah. facing your rod, basically. Okay. So that when that bead slides up, it can slide over straight the over your knot, and the knot's guided yeah. through the bead. Yeah, but okay. Yeah, and the other end, it, it, you know... doesn't make any difference. It doesn't make any difference. But it whichever way around you like. Okay, okay. Because you're not relying on safety for that end. No. It's, it's only that top one. Okay, so, right, we've gone through your, your leader section, shall we call it. Really interesting. Sink, I know I've seen you use before, but I'll be robbing that one off of you. Um, let's get down to the top. Very, you know, and the, probably the most important part in some ways I know it's all mm. important but let's be honest this is the last inch that ends up in the fish's mouth yeah. so let's run through your chods I know you're very methodical on the way you tie them you like them to be exactly the same each time so yeah. let's just go through to start with um, the actual material that you'll use for your chod right that's um, 25 pound stiff link yep uh I'll use a 20 as well, depending on the hook size. So if I'm dropping down to a smaller hook, yep. I'll go down to the 20 pound, just yep. so that it can go through the eye. Because I use a knot that's not on there. And what, I don't use just a quick knot again, anything. for anyone watching this, it, it, a lot of people come unstuck. You know, they'll go out and buy a chod monofilament or, 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 or some chod line there, oh. and then they'll buy it, and then <laughs> trying to struggle and get through the last, you know, the, the loop back through again. Yeah, so it's, it's really important that you pick a hook with a big eye but I think nearly all the purpose design chod hooks now do have a well we you know, did you know our BCR eye. hook which you it's used got which a we, massive we eye on it. the eye yeah. on that so that I can use reason. a 25 even with a size 6 yeah um, I tend to use a size 5 from a hook that's my my choice size uh, with a 14 mil bait I use a size yep. 5 uh, I'll use a 4 if I have to go up to a 16 yeah um, and go down to a 6 if I go smaller yeah um, and the 25 pound does the 6 yeah um but a lot of people, it is a bit of a stretch, though. A lot of people might find it easier to go down to the £20 for that. Yeah. And I would if I went down to 7 yeah. for instance. Yeah. Um, not that's not, obviously you're going through more times. So you could change your knot. You could yeah. go to a whipping knot or a yeah. knot. And you're not going through the eye so many times. But I just find the knot that's not so easy to yeah. tie. It's, it's, it works, yeah. doesn't it? It's yeah. been around for years. Really, and you're really just, really I'm well. confident in it. You know? Yeah, exactly. So we know it works. Um, so yeah, nice big eye on your hook. Um, and really and truly that, that size 5 of the 14 mil bait is a pretty big hook isn't it yes yeah but then that's what you want because it's, it's the sort of rig that's just you know going to grab it to, one go yeah. at it and, yeah. and, and that's got to nail it yeah so okay with the um, link you're using mm. 
clear or green. I know it's you're using a green there. I use green. I don't think it makes because yeah. you know fish are sort of looking outside, but they're not. No, <laughs> they're not physically looking down and going, "Oh, that one's green or that one's." Fish clear, can tell that. the difference in colour between two different links. I think we've it's had not it. Anyway, make so any so difference no. at all? Is no. It? no, I use the green most of the time, but I'm yeah. just as happy with the white. I've used the the or the, the white, the clear. I've used the clear loads of times, caught plenty on that, and yeah. I've used the green. I don't really mind, but I'm not the sort of angler that's going to be carrying both colours. No, no, you want to fit into a minimum. Yeah, I'll I'll just carry one colour and that and that does for everything. Some people want to use green over weed and and different colours over different bottoms. But look, either way, you know, it it, it floats your boat as they say. Yes, if it gives you confidence, you've got to do it. Exactly that. If that's 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 how you're fishing confidently, then then, yeah, that's, that's the way to go. I know you've got your little card, which I've seen you use before. Could you mm. just explain to everyone that card? Because I know you're right. very precise in what you do. Yeah, it's, that is there purely so that I can get each rig the same length. Okay. So my chods are from bend of hook to the top of the eye. That's a two, two and a third inches. Yep. Um, now, if you're just tying them up by eye, you know, you've caught a couple of fish on a rig, and then you tie another one up, and it's a tiny bit shorter, and you tie another one up the next day, and that's a little bit shorter again. Before you know it, you know you can be miles away from what yeah. you started off with. Yeah. So I like to keep them all the same, yeah. and this this is a foolproof way of making sure that every single one is the same length. Explain us how you do this. Right, it's just a bit of card yeah. with two lines on it. One line is the length of the rig, so there's my finished chod rig, and that will line up with the shorter line. Bang on, look at that. And the, and the, the <laughs> second line, basically, is the difference that the knot takes up. So what you'll do is you'll, you'll tie on a hook. In my bag. I know you're Somewhere little... over here. I did see it earlier. Yeah. What is that there it is, over there on the side, next to your pop-up. Put your glasses on, Matt. Put Come on. Glasses. There you go, laying on the top there. There we go. Right. I can have several of these tied up. Now, that's just basically the hook section. Yep. Made it a little bit too long. Yep. But with no swivel on the end. Yep. So I can have loads of those tied up, and then I can use that for a hinge rig if I want it for a hinge rig, or if I'm using it for a chod, I lay it over the card, make a quick fold, and you do want to put a proper fold in that. Yep. I'm down to the second line that you've got below, yep. and then that so the longest way, line. I pop my swivel on, and then just tie an overhand knot in that. Yep. Now these materials are so strong. Yeah, you, that you can get away with a real enough, substandard yeah. knot, yeah. like a, just a single overhand. Yeah, I think a lot of people get confused. They try to do figures of eights and things like that. Yeah, you don't but need to it's too bulky, with, with way this. too bulky. Yeah. This is, I mean, I know it's called twenty-five pound, but it's it's so far underrated. Yeah, that it's it's you know it's not even close. It's they they are so strong Got that it. you can tie the worst knot in the world, and, and it's still going to be plenty yeah, strong yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah, you're never going to break that. Now, if I've got a needle with me, I'll be putting a needle in there to keep that loop round. But basically, once I spoke the purposes down. of this, it, it will just illustrate that now. As soon as you put that on there, it's exactly the same <laughs> thing. <laughs> you know, oh, give, give it take a millimetre or two. <laughs> every single rig is tied the same length. Very, very clever. So, right, okay. The next important thing on a chod um, is the hook. Now. It's weird because we were chatting about this earlier and we've both migrated over to um, the BCR that we do in our yeah. range. Mega oh, sharp over um, a, a larger rye to make life more simple yeah. for people passing yeah. uh, uh, the, the lines through to tie, tie them down. Um, so straight to beaked, why do you use them? I, like you say, they're, they're just superb i love love that big point on them because yeah, um, it's not over it's not no, not, I, not like our talent here it's just a no very it's just a very, very gentle big yeah. now i was a little bit hesitant to start with when, me, when yeah. i was first showing them i thought mm, do we really want to be doing a big point on a chod hook i'd only ever used straight point chods up till then and yeah. i like a big hook yeah uh, but i didn't want them on my on my chods no. initially but you know like, like we do here we test everything don't we so yeah. um i gave them a go they're fantastic and that that beak is so gentle yeah it's hardly even there is it it's i mean it's, it's only really on the outside the inside of the of the point is pretty much straight yeah, and it's on the outside and i'm a i'm a sharpener anyway i was sharp with my hooks. yeah i mean that's mm. another very important thing with a hook um especially when chod fishing is the sharpness of the hook for me is is oh is, it's got to be it's it got to be because it's got like one chance to grab hasn't it yeah. and it's yeah and it's got grabbing because moment. again you've you know when, when you're using a chod you've you know you've got a lot of movement there with no resistance and you almost want that one time that hook to go in and just just nick them enough so that you know when it's one of them things that everyone yeah i mean when, when they're feeding the sort of situation you've got when you're chod fishing i don't think that they're likely to be picking you up two or three times like they would on a 
on like a you know like a little baited patch in the edge yeah. with particles on it and bits and pieces and your hook bait sitting like flat on the bottom yeah yeah you might get picked up and blown out and picked up again and blown out i think if they blow that out i don't think they're going to be picking no. that back up again you've got no. one chance and it's got to break yeah okay. um so yeah i do i want them ultra sharp but yeah. what i can do with these because of that gentle curve on the on the point yeah i just i only ever sharpen just the the you know the outside just face the, i don't do the sides yeah and you, Almost narrow like it you down can a basically bit. flatten off that beak. Yeah. So it's almost. So what you end up with is is a, a point that's sort of like just slightly just pointed in like that, but turning. almost almost straight and just slightly pointed in, which is just like a vice, isn't it? It's yeah. Just not coming out. No. Okay. So and I don't. I've like I say I've, I've lost. I've used these. I don't think I've used any other hook this year other than for surface fishing. Um. Or well, since I've been using the BCRs, how long have we had them out? They've been out a couple of years. Two they? years now. They've been out two, two years, years yeah. and I was testing them before that. Yeah. I've only dropped one fish. I've never had one them. I've had, now. I've had I mean, one, one hook pull on them and that's it. Yeah. And, Incredible and hook. When really, they're in really there, they, they do yeah. go under. And the they? wire's nice and thick and it's got yeah. you know everything you want. In a hook, basically. Everything you want from a from that sort of a hook. Yeah, it's different. Hook, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, okay, I know it's on there. You tie your baits on now. Um, yeah, it's a bit old fashioned, isn't it? <laughs> well, no, no, look, it's not. You know, um, looking at your rig now, obviously, you're just putting a standard large size ring on there, and and you're flossing them on. Okay, so a lot of people now will sort of put it on with a needle because the buoyancy of pop ups over the last five yeah, years has, has increased there. loads. Okay, yeah. we've gone to the sphere mix now, which is ultra buoyant, two buoyant sometimes. Yeah. Um, but you still stick with the old school way of doing it in your tie on. See, I like a bait screw. Um, I, yeah. <laughs> I know you do that. I know you do that. Um, but you know, so you still stick to? Is it just that you stick to what you know by tying baits on? Yes, yeah, pretty much. Because it can, you know, using a swivel I, and other things can adjust the, the buoyancy and, and the and yeah, the, the more the more bits of metal and stuff you're putting on there, heavier you're going to make it. Aren't yeah, you? Um, I've always tied them on, and I and I I just like doing it. The way I tie them on, it's different to a lot of people. Yeah. It's a real simple way. They don't come off. They always yeah. stay on there. Um, but it also gives me, say, I've wound in at the end of the end of the night. I've wound in in the morning. Yeah. Um, I've got a couple of hours left. And I'm not putting it all back out there all night mm. again. I'm left with a loop on the end, and so I can just pierce one on. Yeah, you can just pierce one and melt the end. And, and so blob the so end it gives me yeah. two goes from each bit of floss, if you like. Yeah, and um, I mean, especially it's, again. Yeah, it's just I'm sure the bait screws and everything are fine, but I'm confident with that, and I'm happy with the way it sits yeah. like that, and I don't want to change. And it. to be fair, it does make it. You know, I, I do fish them naked quite a long time, but you know, when you are using lead core, obviously you've you've got the the weight in the lead core itself. So actually, by by flossing a bait on. Um, you know, you're not you're changing the weight at the all. You're putting, the weight. Yeah, you're, no you're, more. you're keeping it running yeah. nice and smooth there. Okay, so that's that's yeah. really interesting. So, when you're fishing on with a chod, so we've run through the setup, amazing, blowing me away. We've gone through the chod itself. Now, when you fish with a chod, it's a great uh, single boily catching machine. A oh, chod, isn't single it? hook base, it's absolutely yeah. perfect, isn't it? If you're yeah. if you're turning up somewhere in the spring, yeah. See if a show you can just cast at it, can't you? Yeah. Whereas there's no other rig that you can do that with the same confidence you can like this. You you can cast at a fish and you might get away with it if it's a yeah. lake with no weed in it or whatever, but you can just make one cast. Yeah, so like a couple little frizzes come up, yeah. you just know you're yeah, on the fishing. money. But if you was to bait with a chod, obviously you myself and yourself would never tight bait with a child you know it's, it's nice for me personally i like it's to just, keep it's, not, dotted it's not that sort of thing is it i mean no. you're if it if it happens to be sitting on the bottom it's two inches above isn't it yeah so you the last thing you want is a tight patch of bait around that yeah. where they can see every single bait and it stands out like and you've got half a chance of finally need... hooking them as well sometimes yeah, if they're grabbing around yeah. especially with a sharp look they might just nick it on the outside of their mouth so i yeah. like you you know like to Spread it out over a, 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 a snooker table size, two snooker tables, whatever. Just yeah, done. And you're getting them looking around for it. Yeah, there's that. And also, I want to make sure, especially if I'm fishing in the weed, I want to make sure that a lot of my bait's going into the weed. Yeah. Now, now you picked up on something really Im- interesting. Sorry to interrupt again. Um, that when you are fishing this over weed, sometimes you'll chop your bodies in half to stop them sinking too much into the weed. Well, no, I, I don't actually do that at all. Right, okay. I've, I'd heard of people doing that. Yeah. Um, and I did the underwater feature with Rob Hughes for yep. Carpology magazine. And the thing I wanted to learn from that was that do my baits sit up in the weed or do they all work their way down to the bottom? Because, yep. you know, round baits, it's easy to think that as they go into the weed, they just, tumble through they just and, go through. Yeah. And so I purposely put myself in one of the weedy swims on the yep. lake so that I could bait up in the weed and Rob could go out and tell me how they were sitting. And they were sitting at all levels, all, all through the whole, the whole column in the weed. Up yeah. and down there. Yeah. And, and where was your it's, child? Out of curiosity, when you were fishing that situation, where yeah, was, it was up, on, up on top of the weed the top. Yeah. with baits around it. And it's, it's, it's hard to get your head around, really. When you first start catching them like that, 
but catching fish miles off the bottom. It's almost like you know zig fishing, but in the weeds. You know, <laughs> yeah. We all think in two dimensions. When you're fishing on the bottom, you're thinking in two dimensions as to your baiting spread. You know, ten foot past, ten foot short, left and right. I mean, you don't really want them short here, but um, you're you're thinking in just those two planes. But when you're fishing chods in the weed. You've got to be thinking of that yeah. as well. It's yeah. three-dimensional. And they do grub through it, looking for them, don't they? They, they smash through it. I've caught so many fish well above the bottom. Well, we're going to some of some photos of your fish in a minute as well, um, yeah. all caught in different situations. One of them I know you did say you'd caught in God knows how much weed. But sorry, I interrupted you again then, but we'll see some of their pictures in a minute where you can explain to us. Yeah how you call in what sort of situation, yeah. you know. So, um, yeah, interesting. Just another one quickly there as well. Colour of hook bait when you're chod fishing. Yeah. Do you match the hatch, as they say? I know it's carp. Um, or or do, you, do you go with whites, fluoros? Is there any particular colour for you? When my you're... ideal um, is something that's along the same colour lines as what I'm using for a freebie, but just slightly brighter. Mm-hmm. So, for instance, um, if I'm using cell, a white hook bait over the top. Yep. Either a slightly paler beige sort of colour or a white because it's in the same colour plane yeah. if I was using a fish meal I'd want a, a red bait yeah. but, a, but a brighter red one yeah. so same sort of colour but slightly brighter whether that makes that much difference or not, yeah, I don't know, well, but, but yellows and whites are, are really if you were single hook bait fishing yeah, would it be fluoro oh yeah yeah, yeah so you're saying with yellows yeah. pinks yeah. you know etc although I've, I've caught on on food baits I think when, they're, when they're fishing. feeding they're feeding I don't think it matters what colour you put down there if they're, they're, they're on the grub you know. I, don't, oh, I, do th- I do think it can make a difference okay there's, just pick there, there, there's been times where it's just you know you you hit on that right colour and it's eureka moment. Yeah. It's that's it on all three rods and and then you catch and that that can be that and it has been the, getting the right colour hook bait has unlocked bases before. Okay, okay, and you know even even from a was going from a yellow to a white. You know, yellow, yeah, yellows have, just have been doing well, and they just start to wane, and you go to whites, and suddenly you start catching again. Yeah, and I don't think it changes so much day to day, but year to year. Yeah, I mean, it it's weird, you know, isn't I've, it? I've had really good seasons on on, on not dark pink hook baits, it's, but, it's, but that's not on chart. So we're just going down a whole different path now. Well, you, you turn up and like, oh, you know, catch on yellow in here, mate. You know, you get a lot of that, don't yeah, you? Oh, oh, you do, yellow, yeah. yellow's the colour. Sometimes yeah. it's true. Mm. There was a lake I fished myself, uh, and and it was weird. Yellow did seem to just catch, but I've done it because everyone color. was doing it. I mean, yellow's one of them cracking colours that, that just absolutely catches, fantastic you know. colour. Yeah, um, but yeah, strange one. But mm. um, but especially as well when you're fishing in that weed, you know, that you want something that's going to stand out on that weed so that they yeah. can they can see the baits because yeah. like we touched on before about them feeding in all levels. Yeah. You know, they're, they're not looking down on these baits on the bottom on a, on a nice gravel patch no. where they're easily identifiable. These these baits are like, you know, individual baits hung up in the weed yeah. at all different levels. So they're having to travel about. Yeah. And if you can make that grab their attention a little bit, it's yeah. likely to get investigated. Yeah. Interesting. You know, and some, some of the weed that I've caught fish from has been, you know, like eight foot of solid weed in 12 foot of water. And you're catching them four foot from the top. Mad, isn't it? Yeah. Well, on it's that, absolutely incredible. let's have a little look. Where's my, my, my projector man? Hold on a minute. He's going to put us some fish up. So, explain. What a fish. Yeah, incredible capture that. It's one of my... Bro, well, that is my favourite winter capture, really. It's And that was a December fish, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, December the 9th, I think that was. 9th or 10th and of December. Son of... Son of Triple Row from Dinton Pastures. Um, I was on my way out from a session, and I just stopped and had a look in a swim that I'd done well in earlier in the season, and I saw a... I saw a black, a black shape come out, and I didn't know it was that fish, but I knew it was a dark one, so it, it was certainly one of the contenders. Um, and with nothing else to go on the following week, I, f- I fished in that swim, and the weed was so horrendous. I mean, that was definitely. And this be, was December. That was December. Yeah, and it yeah. sort of started to drop down. No, 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 it didn't drop. Was it one of those mild year? winters that we'd had some years ago? Because like I say, some, no, no, it's cold. Really? It was cold, okay. but it's, if for anyone that knows Dinton, they'll know it, it's it's incredibly weedy. It's a really, yeah. really weedy lake. Um, and that area that I caught that from there was no spot and I subsequently went out in a boat and and you can see you could see out there there's not even a low spot now a lot of the time you see I'll be I'll be trying to find like a like a depression in the weed or yeah. maybe somewhere where they let it get down to the bottom yeah. but sometimes you can't even get let down at all sometimes and you mentioned that earlier sometimes it's not always about feeling for a drop with a child it's, you, you've mentioned no well, we for one you know it's that far away isn't it yeah so what that lands on isn't that relevant to what this is over you know six foot away it could, could be something your, different your, your but a lot the of the time here. I'm fishing in that depth of weed that yeah. the lead doesn't even get to the bottom so most of the time it's 
you're you're feeling let down through the weed and you'll feel some sort of a drop but it's of, it's almost imperceptible a lot of the yeah. time sometimes it's just a little really subtle just to, oh did it or did didn't it ground, but yeah. if you think it might have done then it did but in some situations it, I mean, it doesn't really matter whether the lead got down to the bottom no. or not you're fishing in heavy weed as long as I felt it fill go down through the water you know if you cast into surface weed it's, as soon as that lead hits it's just yeah. and you know it's not fishing yeah. but sometimes it's Drop it down like that. If you felt it go down through four or five foot of water, yeah, and, and then, then it just, just you just lose just feeling. Stops, you just yeah, yeah it, it doesn't. You don't feel anything, do you? You just lose contact with it. And it but it's still fishing. Yeah, and I've got loads like that. And this and, is one. And, of, and that's, the, that's one. Was that, was that a single look bait fish or a few bites around it? No, about thirty bites around that. Okay, Love but scattered that. far and wide. Yeah. Okay. So um, he was grabbing. He was looking for them bites. Yeah, well and looked. Um, it was absolutely no, and a famous fish as well, wasn't it? I mean, you know, yeah. what a fish! So. But it, it was one of those with a typical chod bite that wasn't, you know, didn't pull the tip round or anything. It's just like, you know, like an yeah. inch or two lift on the bobbin. Yeah. Oh, was it? Isn't it? Then it dropped down, and that was it for ages. And we're just watching it all shit, and then just lifted so up a tiny looked bit for a while. As they are yeah, sometimes, I think chods, it was, he was up for a while. I think because with that running chod, you've, there's no tension on the line, and if they've moved that way, they just don't know they're hooked. I don't think. Mm. Sometimes just time. sitting that week. Yeah, yeah, just sitting, just grabbing around, maybe for a. a Another bait or anything? You could have I don't know, that. but it's um, yeah, it was a bream bite, and it came in it's a big bream. bit like a bream. Yeah, <laughs> came, came in a bit like a bream, more like a tufty bream. actually. I thought it was a tufty on the way, and it just didn't didn't fight all the way until it got under the tip, and then it did. But yeah, an, in, an incredible fish, and and probably my favourite winter capture. Okay, a uh, slide two cameraman, or oh, oh well, oh yes. So explain this one to us, mate. Now that one's in there. That's two, and in that the looks like winter shot. Sorry, to interrupt. That that's uh, probably last week of the season. That's uh, okay. middle of March. Yep. Um, it's in there to illustrate that it's not only a rig for casting out in the pond. I mean, okay. I've I've used them right in the edge and watched fish looking at them and not taking. Was but this one that, caught in the edge? This that was that's an edge capture. Yeah, really. Yeah. On a show, yeah. and most people, yeah, just on a, I mean, just a, a, a little under. No, I know. So that's under you know fleet. interesting to see. It does work in all situations. So this was like yeah. say end of season yeah. um, fished under your tips almost or yeah. in the margin. Um, stunning fish look at that that's a lovely lovely one that's 41 12 from memory I think okay lovely mate and, and that was a and rare, rare one as well didn't get caught a lot that one always better than that like that yeah it's nice to get one yeah. rare ones stunning fish okay so that was a clean bottom caught cool fish yeah absolutely crystal clear Under. crystal clear bottom close in you know less than a rod length out amazing okay slide free sir Oh, another lovely. That's that. the same lake. That's, that's an incredibly old fish. And I can't name the lake or the fish in it, but okay. that's a really, really old one. That. That's probably 50 years old. I can't. Nearly as old as you. It was just a bit younger than you, I think, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now again, that, the, that the one, situation this was caught. Yeah, I put that in there um, to show that it's not only for. It's a weedy lake, it's a really weedy lake, yep. but that was caught, caught on a real clean gravel spot. You know, we could feel every bump of the gravel. So the last two here, clean spots, yeah. on a child. You know, oh, that was further out. That was probably fifty Most yards out. Most people would have put a different rig down in a situation like that. Yeah, so. they probably would. And I'm not saying another rig wouldn't work, but it's just to illustrate the point that you know, if in that sort of feeding scenario when you're scattering bait about, you know, a, a chod, a chod will work. Okay. It might not be the best presentation, like we said earlier, in in every single situation, but it's a good presentation. Yeah. In all of them. Okay. Next that's, slide, uh, sir. Yeah, one of my favourite fish. That. And uh, that one that's another Dinson fish that's I don't think that had been caught for a good five years before I caught that and I've not heard of it coming out since really yeah and that was another one of those in real thick weed that was so it was a very similar situation to Sun of Triple Row uh, diff- completely different time of year this is, this is um, like late summer time yeah uh, it's in a corner swim which is one of the shallower areas so it's one of the first areas to weed up and one of the really really weedy bits yeah uh, so and fish that just was, generally get in there that, that time of year and, and they uh, do get in there they don't get caught a lot in that sort of area that often um, they do get caught in there it's quite a popular swim yeah. but it's it's uh, yeah it's like a carp hotel type area it's okay. an area they like to chill out in now there were a lot of fish showing there mm. um, and there were very very few drops you know you couldn't really get there down to the bottom in many places and I saw one show in the evening and I'd, I'd not had anything show on my right hand rod so I moved a rod and it must have taken me 50 casts just to get a lead just to drop through the water any feel, distance yeah. through and I, and I felt it just go through a little bit and, it, and you, could, you couldn't even feel it touch the bottom it was just a just a tiny bit like, oh did that go just enough did, to did, make did. you think and I thought I might yeah, be with that yeah it's down it's you know it, it's under the surface 
that's doing fishing. his job. Yeah, that's fishing. And uh, yeah, that's 37, I think, that one. 37 Lovely and a half. Fish, and that's a fish called Harvey's. Okay. Lovely fish. I don't, I don't know if it's been caught since, but I haven't heard of it coming okay. up since. Interesting. Okay, next slide, sir. But it's, it's in a situation where I had no right to land one, really. Interesting. Okay, so now we've got all the yeah. lovely common there. So, again, this situation where this one was caught, child again, right. obviously. Yeah, yeah, child fish again. Um, I'm lucky enough to have caught that fish three times. And now that's... It's just greedy. That's, yeah. again, that's, that's, yeah, that's one <laughs> on of the... On a out of curiosity, or three times uh, on a Twice on a child and okay. once, on a, once on a hinge. Um, it's another one of those rare ones. That's another old fish as well. That's another 50-year-old fish. You can tell the sort of fish I love fishing. Yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, that one... That was caught. I didn't. I wasn't targeting that particular fish, but it was. It was caught in a particular way. There were, I could see him in probably a five foot of water, four mm. five foot of water, but swimming across the top of the weed. And so they're only. They're not even two foot down. It's probably a foot below the surface. I caught. That. So just yeah, they were, they were cruising the to- yeah. on top of the weed, backs yeah. out. Um, summertime, it's just, shot, just, obviously yeah, then, summertime. Yeah. It's just solid weed out there. There's nothing else yeah. out there. Um, so I purposely was fishing on top of that weed. I could see my hook bait. No freebies, just. I know oh, I had freebies out okay. there as well, so but I could see them about to, during to, the day, during the like the afternoon. There were gulls diving on my hook bait. Okay, I couldn't get it; they couldn't reach it, but they were diving on. They could see it they were diving on me, and then just enough to catch his eye. Yeah, and yeah, and, then, and caught him like, you know, first light the following morning. So but purposely on top of the weed, so you couldn't feel the lead go down or anything. You didn't fish that, probably that far below the surface. Crazy. Okay, we've got mm. another slide there. I think one, is this one of the last ones now? And again, this was just another. Chod Muncher situation. Yeah, yeah, that's forty-two pound on the nose, I think, from memory. Um, You're smiling I've in put, that one, mate. You look a bit more happy in that one, Matt. Oh, I was really pleased. With that, <laughs> I was really pleased. If you saw what I went through to land that fish, <laughs> tell us what did you go through to catch that fish? Right, I put that in there because it illustrates perfectly the way that you know, if you hook a fish on a chod, then it's not coming off. Yep. Or if you fish it this way, I hooked that fish at about two o'clock in the morning. Landed it at about eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> okay. It was on there for that long, so it's. And I wasn't fishing far out. It's just, but it's just horrendous weed, just real solid. So, solid okay, weed. it's interesting. You you had him hooked. So again, people listening to this, quite an interesting one actually. So you had the fish. You've, you've hooked him at two in the morning. Mm. Um, you knew he was on there. Oh yeah. But you just couldn't battle him through that weed. Now a lot of people sometimes go for the straight line, go for the pole. You shouldn't. Have, so, me personally, I say I'll just just keep the tension on and stand there and just let him bump out of it. And is that what what you done yourself so how did you get him in in the end right I'll I'll go through the whole the whole thing yeah. if I might um, I'd been fishing a different swim and although I'd had fish in front of me to start with they just disappeared and I went for a walk around the lake and I found loads of fish right up at the other end but there were also loads of anglers so all I could do was just drop into somewhere where I'd seen something some bubbling the previous day yeah. and it's a fish I'd never caught a swim I'd never caught from before now there was a set of pads probably 30 yards out and an island 25 yards out on the left the pads are slightly right um, and I just saw a tiny bit of bubbling so I'm well away from anyone else on the lake and I just saw this tiny little bit of bubbling I thought that, that's all I've got to go on there's so much weed it was unbelievable I couldn't get anywhere near the pads there was that much weed so mm. I, I could only get probably 15 yards out and that was it um, so just two flicks with chods they landed on the bottom so the leads went down so I'm just yeah. this side of the weed now when that went that was it's a summer summer bite so it wasn't one of these tentative little bites that just went really and I'm fishing like locked it. up but it still got into the weed you know, it's not yeah. taking any line off but just the slack yeah. so it's got into a bit of the weed it's gone under there and then it's kited left underneath the weed so it's bowed around a wee bed almost yeah, it's gone, and then it's yeah. come up oh, he's so, <laughs> done a knot on you yeah, yeah it's <laughs> completely tied me up in there now, by the time I've got to, well, I've got to the rod quite, quite quick. You know, it's it's a it's a tiny little swim, so you've got no choice but to be bivvied up right next to your rod. Yeah. So you almost like just step out and pick the rod up. Um, it's gone under. I've picked the rod up and it's it's just kited underneath and it's come up and it's in so much weight it's unbelievable. And I can see it and it's and it's coming right up underneath and it's thrashing on the top and it's. And normally I would slacken off then if I can't get anything. Yeah, I've I've given it everything with a rod. As a, for as long as I can hold it yeah. and normally I'd slacken off then and leave it till it either comes out or wait till morning when I can see what I'm doing you know maybe get the boat out or whatever but this was a lot of real full moon night so there's plenty of light about so I could see what I was doing I could yeah. see the fish thrashing yeah. so I thought I'll, I'll do uh, what I 
will often do in that sort of situation let's try and break it out yeah we saw you do that on Gold Lake I Gold think. Lake yeah and, and I think on the Blue Pool as well I've done it, yeah, done it a few times and that's so caught me a few you, fish you rode yeah. either side basically so that is one of those situations okay. where you know you, you're not going to get the fish in with your line and a three and a half pound rod so I've got the spod rod out put a weed rake on the end and just chipped away at the weed one of our kept gar- casting the weed rakes of oh, course yeah <laughs> very much yeah thank you and cast <laughs> cast left of it and right of it but well left and right because yeah. you don't want to be hitting the fish nope. do you? so go left and right and just try and chip away at the weed so that I can like, cut all the bits off at the side just create less resistance try, on it, yeah. Yeah, yeah and try and get the weed moving um, and it, it took hours to do it but eventually I did manage to do it and, and got this massive weed bed in but I could have cut it off at the sides there was no way the other bit was going to come in no. so it eventually broke away at the back and there was that much weed in front of me that I I couldn't sink the net or anything, so I had to throw the net on top of the weed, jump in. Apart from I couldn't even jump in, I just jumped on the weed. Yeah, there's that much there. Pull the fish up. It, it was still to sitting do, on the top. The <laughs> no, it's, a, it's a foot deep. Um, <laughs> pick the fish up because he's still on the top of the weed. He's not. He's not gone down at all. No. He's not done anything other than just, just sitting in the weed. The pick him up and, and chuck him in the net. A bit like when we was at Blue yeah. Pool again. When we was yeah, exactly, having to help exactly each other the same sort of thing. But, through, through but yeah, hours and hours. But yeah, you know, he's, he was thrashing around on the top. That and whole a lot time of people he, really, and, like I say, and that hook would have stayed in there. Lost that fish, maybe. I'm not saying you know about, about angling, but a lot of people would have given up. But you pursued. Yeah, you I, carried I think on. panicking's not the thing to do. Pulling for you can't pull him for a break, no. can you? And and yeah, maybe hand lining is a you know a feasible tactic. But I'll try all extent, sorts of other yeah. things first. I'll I'll just keep the rod bent and see if I can get them out that way first. Yeah. Um, but slacking and off works a lot as well. So that's a great yeah. way to get them out. Just slack yeah. them, but slack them right off. Just not let them budget out not just slacking off and wait till it moves again and then pick it up. Slacking off and keep slacking and off. And give them, really let them take a rod length away from it. Yeah, yeah, let them take a rod length before we okay. go picking the rod up. Interesting. So and do we? Um, sorry, I was going to yeah. Say you know, go back to bed. Put your buzzer back on. And go back yeah. to bed. You know, there's no no point in just keep picking the rod up and keeping on it. Just let them let them do what they've got to do. They they normally sitting in the weed, just chilled out quite. So happy. don't play don't play a tug of war with them. Just just let them move away from it a little bit and and then just. Try and ease them back. Yeah, and certainly in the night, and wait till daylight, and sort it out when you can see what you're doing, and it's a lot safer to do, it, especially yep. if you've got to go out on the boat. Yeah. Okay. So have we got Ooh. another slide on there, sir? Oh, that's a lovely. That's a lovely. That's a mirror carp all day. Look at that. It's a lovely fish. So okay, yeah, the situation. It's the seaside fun, Timo, that one. That's um, half Lynn. and that's another one to illustrate like the versatility of chod fishing yeah. and and catching on the weed. Yeah. And the fact that you can catch them out the edge with it that illustrates yeah. all three of those. Um, that was only my, it was my second trip on there. Okay. Um, I'd seen fish on the previous trip, and I'd even lost one. Yeah. Um, and I'd seen them visiting this little corner, and there was a, like a donut-shaped hole in the weed. So it was, there was a little bit of weed in the middle, and then this ring. And I'd been fishing in that hole, uh, and I'd seen the fish in there the, the previous day. And I was going to move out before I'd seen them, because there was just nothing there. And then I got up the tree for one last look before I moved. Um and I saw it clouding up and saw some fish in there so that was it I'd stay put if not I'd found a few fish elsewhere um, and it's a really good climbing tree in this swim so I was up and down the tree uh, all morning pretty much the, but the following day I'd seen fish I'd seen a group of six that were just like swimming about and they'd mm. come right in right and close under the rod tip and then they'd go down the margin away from me and I'm in a, in a little corner yeah. a little corner a weedy corner um, and they'd been going down the margin and they'd stop in a little area and then go around in a circle and while they were in their circle there were fish feeding on the spot that was yeah. fishing and then there were only two in that group so there's a group of six and a group of two and the two came up and they'd come in under the rod tips while that group were feeding and they went down the margin one in, and one stopped almost, yeah, all, yeah well yeah there's just this big group and then the little group and the, the group of two the fish looked a lot bigger but they didn't look that sort of size you know they looked like a mid 30 um, and what is that fish in weight sorry uh, 56 14 oh lovely yeah, lovely. <laughs> yeah it's okay. a big old fish unfortunately it's died now but um, yeah so I'm watching these two fish go down the edge and they'd stop just above this little bit of weed and they just you just see this cloud of silt come out that's settled on top of the weed and I was thinking that I should have had a bite from the spot that I'm fishing you know they're, they're feeding on it clearly both mm. groups are feeding on it and I thought it's one of my lines going through that's putting them off I didn't quite know what was wrong but I just 
I thought to myself, I don't want two rods going through because I was fishing another rod beyond that spot and I, I wanted that line out of the way. So I reeled that other rod in and chucked it down the edge to the spot where they were clouding up. Now, it was it's not somewhere I could cast too properly. It was a, like a sideways flick. Yeah, yeah. So I, there's no way I was going to get a spot on it. But I was really, really lucky with the cast and it landed probably two foot off. Golden cast. That, yeah, that's as good as it's going to get. <laughs> so I left that and, you know, and it was... It, Go with that flick down. Same thing I was talking about with the cast. Rather than bringing the rod up, I couldn't because it's down it's the edge. I had to bring it back that way yeah. and do the same down. Got up the tree and I could see my hook bait sitting there. Just, I don't know, it's crystal clear water. It's probably four foot down in the water. So it's nowhere near the bottom again. And it's just sitting on top of the bit of weed. And there was clear water next to it. And I thought, oh, I wish I'd landed in that bit of clear, mm. really. But As it did. landed there. And I thought, I'm not going to repeat that. No. Um, <laughs> this is not going to happen again now is no. one of and that, that had been down there I don't know half an hour and then I did get a take on the rod that was fishing on the spot so it sort of okay. justified me really that other yeah. rod in well I don't know whether there's anything to do with it I reeled um, I picked the rod up played the fish for a couple of minutes and it fell off Eesh. yeah and I was uh, not best pleased and I thought well that's it and you know I'd only got till about one o'clock that afternoon yeah. and I, I don't know what time that was but it wasn't it was probably I don't know 11, 10, 11 something like that so I thought, oh, that's it. I'm done. I might as well pack up. Game over. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought, oh, well, I might as well just chuck it back out while I'm packing up. So I, I think I think the bait was still on there. So I just flicked that back out onto the, the little donut spot and started packing up my stuff. But as you do, you get up the tree and have another little look. And I spent so much time up and down this tree. And it's not an easy tree to climb. It's a real... <laughs> <laughs> it's all right to get up. It's fine to get up, but it's getting down, down you've got to worry yeah, about getting it. down, it's one of those where you've got to put your foot on a branch, then you've got to swap. You've got to swap feet. <laughs> so I'm up the tree, and the, this group of six is nowhere to be seen. Couldn't see the other two. And I'm looking at it, and then I did see, just I, I just I saw the spot that was further out. It clouded up again. Thought, ah, maybe I haven't blown it. Maybe there are still fish about. And I didn't see the six again. They'd gone. So I assume that I hooked one of those six. And, yeah. that, and that taken that, that group, gone off, but yeah. I got away with it with the other two while they were doing their circuit. Yeah. I've hooked one of them, yeah. so it's not spooked them. And the two fish came up, these this one and, and one other, rose up off that spot, did the same again, came back under the rod tips, went down that, and this is the first time they'd done it since I'd had a bait down the edge. Went down that edge, and it stops right over the top of the hook bait, and I couldn't, you know, I couldn't see, but over that, it. well, that hook, the hook bait disappeared from view. The fish is in the way it's between me and the hook bait, so I can't see it. And then I just saw it like that. I'm fishing locks up, up no, a tree, up a tree, no <laughs> butt rest. And I bet you got down that tree really quickly, didn't you? Yeah, I got I got a couple of the steps until it got to the swapping feet bit, and I couldn't work that out. And I, I fell out of the tree basically, I fell in the nettles. <laughs> and but, there you go. Yeah, and absolutely amazing. And it just went and went and went. Probably took fifty yards of line off me. Wow. Yeah, fantastic Sweet. capture. And to be able to see it happen as well, like that. Yeah. But it just goes to illustrate that, you know, it's just such a versatile rig. Yeah. In the edge. To show four foot it. down from the yeah. surface where you, you couldn't have presented anything else. No, and, get, and that's where they come into their run. Yeah, and um, the battle from hell as well. And, yeah. you know, and, and they and just it was all they don't fall it. off. Yeah. And fish like that. And yeah. is there, I think we're done now, aren't we? I think that's the best. So, well, look, Matt, that's blown me away. And I hope everybody that's watching, it opens their eyes up. Um, to our good chod fishing can be yeah you know? can be it's not um, the answer to everything you don't no, want to be doing it all absolutely. the time but, but in a, a lot rig, of situations it's it's a rig to be used and to you know to yeah, be used just, successfully as just, well and you know a lot of yeah. us and they, put some thought into it and it, and it's you know it's yeah. just as valid as any other rig you know you, you, it's not just for chucking and chancing it's it can use it for that I suppose but it's you put some thought into it and you can really you know, reap the, the benefits, benefits of it, it, yeah. 100%. So, well, look, Matt, thanks for coming in, mate. That's been a pleasure, Joe. Sure really enjoyed you'll, it. Uh, be sat here again soon talking to us. Yeah. We might have some hopefully. more stories for then. Yeah. Some of our funny nights that we have with, with fishing. <laughs> I look forward to fishing with you, hopefully, again soon once all this lockdown uh, stuff lifts and yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll get out and have some, yeah, some sessions. So, Matt, thanks for coming in, mate. It's been an absolute pleasure. And um, as I call you, Bungle Bunts. See you soon, mate. Take yeah, care. Don't